Pick up those microphones. I want to introduce uh, Hannah and her mom, uh, Paula. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. Have you been on with us before? I don't think so. Not with me, I don't think you have, huh? No. Uh, I, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, now, where are you guys from? We're from Sarasota. Ah, uh, nice. So, not too far. Yeah. Well, your story goes, and uh, Mom can come in on this, of course, uh, at, uh, at age four, you were diagnosed with? Leukemia. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And you're going, what the heck? Why me? <laughs> Mom? That's what we said. <laughs> exactly. And, and what else did you say? I mean... Uh, where's Johns Hopkins? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Had you heard about Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital at this point? Uh, Back then it was yeah. All Children's, but still. One phone call at our local hospital, and we were on our way to this amazing place. Yeah. At four years of age, now you had a healthy baby, right starting out. Yep, she was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And how, I mean, is it your first? Uh, she's my second. My second, okay. So, can you take us back to those moments when, you know, you're, you're diagnosed and, and, and going from there and coming through the doors for the very first time? Uh, it was Mother's Day, so that was um, a little bit of a extra... Emotional... Bump in the road. Bump, yeah. Um, and uh, we had never been faced with cancer in our family. Friends, family, she was, on, she was the first one, so it was a whole yeah. world that it was like I didn't actually know the world personally so yeah it was and, and a quite lot of blow in, in, yeah and a lot of don't and you, especially when you hear the c word on a four-year-old i mean you're like whoa yeah and they knew right off the bat that she was um a high-risk situation because of her counts just from the first blood wow. test so then what happens so our journey was uh, two and a half years of chemo. She had radiation on the brain because she tested in a very rare percentile where it spread to the brain. Oh, my goodness. That's right. I just saw a little bit of like 5%. Yeah. So that was another added blow to it all. Correct. I mean, it's just like, are we going to get through this? Uh, you know, do you remember any? Of, I mean, I knew you were only four, but what do you remember? Um, I remember having donut parties. For like with like my nurses and stuff, and I remember like having like my little car th that I had in like the playroom, and I like I wanted to keep it in my room, but they said I couldn't. I remember like getting like needles and like shots in my legs and stuff. I hated those, but my mom always wanted me to remember like the fun good things mm -hmm. and like running down like the bridge with my pole <laughs> and just like full of chemo probably yeah. not something <laughs> they allow anymore, but uh, we definitely. Uh, made the most of uh, our time and they actually did hide certain toys knowing Hannah was coming in and mm. um, a little puppy toy. Do you remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> so we actually tried to make it fun. So honestly, I think we uh, got an A plus and it was easy though. The nurses, the doctors are amazing and we had fun. Um, <laughs> you know, you roll with it and they made it easy to make it as a fun time as much as we could with her. And, and, and sometimes that sounds odd to some people. You think, okay, hospital, you're, you're staring down cancer of your four-year-old and fun. But I think part of that is the psyche. That is part of the medicine, the healing, and the hope that uh, this place has. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it, yeah. She did amazing with all the bumps that we got in the beginning. She, uh, she could not have done any better. Um, and it's from all the help here and we love this place so much. We're here with uh, Hannah, 15 now. Wow. <laughs> Is it great to be 15? Pretty good. <laughs> 15. And, of course, Mom, uh, Paula from Sarasota, we're talking about uh, her having uh, cancer, leukemia at age uh, four. How does it feel to be? I mean, you're a long-term survivor. I mean, you kicked it in the butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So, uh, you know, take us from the time, you know, from, you know, like, you, you, you had this and you fought it and the chemo and all that. It's been a long journey. What's your, what's your, what's your uh, thoughts on the whole thing? Um, I, well, I know that's a loaded question. You can just pick whatever <laughs> you want there, but you know what I'm saying. Well, my mom, she just kind of told me that, like, I mean, I was little, so I didn't really, like, yeah. know. I was just like, uh, she was like, you're just going to spend more time not at home. You're just going to be at this different place. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just, you know, it, it, but then, and then when did she start getting, at what age did you know, uh, you know, she had started to, you know, that, that it was turning in your favor? I mean, was there a certain age where she, you know, it, it went into remission? She went into remission pretty quickly, and it's just a matter of staying in remission. Um, 
two and a half years uh, chemo every day and had uh, 10 radiation treatments to her brain, um, had a port for three years. Um, she, right away, she pretty much, um, okay. they started noticing that um, the cancer was gone and it's just a matter of keeping it away. And uh, we really didn't have too many hiccups in the road. Um, they do a great job here and we did everything we were supposed to do and Luckily for Hannah, she was um, blessed to have a pretty, it was very rigorous, but um, good treatment plan. Yeah. You still have to go in and get checked and uh, do some things still right, obviously. Yeah, once every year. Oh, I like that. That's, that. that's a good number. Only once a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And after we get tea and we get gelato. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's our daily routine. <laughs> I love it, Hannah. That's great. Now, what are you doing? What else is going on in your life? Aren't you doing some stuff out in, in uh, LA? Yeah. yeah. La La Land. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a second. Tell us about what's, what's going on with you there. Well, I, for like, during, like when I had cancer, I got like a wish and I wanted to meet Miranda Cosgrove from iCarly. So I like got to go on the set of iCarly and meet her and jump on her bed. And like I gave her sleep bands and like she thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I <laughs> thought it was cool too. And then I was like. It was cool. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, mom, I was like, I want to do that. I, I want to do what she's doing. And my mom was like, whoa, that's completely different. And so, like, a year later, we, like, tried it out. And, like, I did, like, a short film. And then, like, I did, I got into an episode of Castle and an episode of Criminal Minds. And then, like, a Disney movie, Summer wow. Forever. And now I do voiceover. Oh, you do the voice. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I, it's, yeah. So yeah. How, what, kind of, what kind of voiceover stuff? For people who know that is, you know, you see characters or you... Like do, animation. Yeah, animation. I mean, we do them in radio as commercials and stuff. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, they don't see our face. Like, you don't want to see my face, but they want to see yours. <laughs> but uh, anyway, but how's that going? It's fun because, like, you don't really have to worry how much you look like. So, like, you can <laughs> right. have, like, a pajama day and there's, like, Bagel Friday there. And so I'm on Ruff Ruff Tweet and Dave and I'm Tweet. And I'm on Palace Pets on Disney Junior, wow. and I'm Bree the Mouse. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the look for you. I know I don't, haven't really watched a lot of that, but I, that's all, I'm sure a lot of our listeners uh, know about that. That's great stuff. <laughs> that is so. I, I, I have a sneaking suspicion your um, your uh, job. I probably wouldn't even call it a job. It's fun. It's a, something. It's fun that pays some money and stuff. Is this what you want to do when you grow up? I mean, you want to stay in the entertainment field. You want in the voiceover things like. Is that is that? Yes. What, what would be your? You know, where, where would you see yourself ten years from today when you're uh, twenty five? Hopefully on the red carpet with Oscars. No. <laughs> um. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just something in. in yeah. So how's that going, Mom, as far as that work? Is she gonna, you guys going to have to move closer to the entertainment areas out there? Or, or can you do it long distance? Or do you fly out often? Or what, what, what? We're there. It started four months, five months, six months yeah. out of the year. Now we're there about eight months out of the year. Oh. We have a place out there. God. Oh, okay. This um, is here. That's cool. That is yeah, really yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. So wow. we spent a lot of time out there. She's got an um, episode of um, on Comedy Central for Adults, a Ben Stiller production show that will come out next year. Well, let's so look she's, for... She's Hannah moving Swain. along. That's nice. The the the, uh, the young female version of Ryan Seacrest, maybe, or something, you know, something like that. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, good Thank for you. you. That is really good. Well, hey, uh, it was nice to catch up with you guys. Just a, a, a quick thing, a little incentive to, to tell our listeners out there, the ones that are on the edge right now, going, oh, I, oh, I've been meaning to call, or I'll do it later today, or you know, oh, I got other people, I got I got other things I got to do, to pick up this phone and give us a call. What would you say to those that are? This place about. is worth it. Um, please, um, we've been a part of this hospital for many years. We've done telethons with them. It's been, um, it's they take care of their their people in all ways. Patients, doctors, nurses. Please, um, without their help, we really can't get this hospital to stay at the level that it's at. We need everyone's help. We would love their help, and we would love um, donations to come flying in today. Absolutely. Well said. And like I said, every, all the dollars stay right here and it's in our backyard. It's not like when you had this, you know, you had to pick up and fly to Switzerland and relocate because that was the only place. The place does everything. And you, young lady, keep going with the voiceovers and everything and stay healthy and be well. And we love you for coming by and coming by here. I'm, I'm, glad, you're, I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you. You're very welcome. We'll look for you. Hannah Swain on all those, uh, on all those. Uh, did you have a website or anything? 
No? No. I have, like, I and IMDb and Instagram and stuff. Yeah, he's right. Okay, cool. All right, got it there. All right, guys, 1-800. You're awesome. 1-800-270-8642. Boy, start out with cancer at age four, and, uh, and look what she's doing now. It's pretty amazing. There is hope here. It is absolutely, stunningly amazing, but it's more common than you'd think, and we love it. We want it to be common every day when it happens for any of these kids. 800-270-8642. 800-270-8642. Call right now. Just $15 a month, we ask. That is absolutely put you in the running for the Universal Orlando tickets. It's our 10th annual from Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital, U.S. 1035.